I finished the boring process of entering uh, 14 um, coordination uh, point for that and as you can see we have a E type of a shape uh, for the um, cross section of the stator uh, we are going to after that uh, make make an extrude or uh, extrude is a term that they use in the SOLIDWORKS we can call it here uh, sweep Bam. And basically generate the uh, the part that we are looking for. Um, one thing that I wanted to tell you is, uh, if you are adding the points, there are two ways you can add the X, Y, Zs in this 14 points. And um, one way is to uh, populate the point one, and um, you can see that there is a point two as well. Uh, the point two is the point one of the next line. Okay. So if you are populating point one, that would be the, the first point. The second point is the first point of the second line. As you can see, they are the same. And if you change them, you can see that both of them are going to change at the same time. Okay, so um, try to get some uh, shape like this. And uh, as you can see, I gave you the, the, <coughs> the coordinates. You just pause, pause the video and go through the coordinates. Hello. There is a correction here. I'm going to uh, put it in the middle of the video. Um, I continued and I realized that there was a problem here. Uh, to whom uh, of you that you have this problem that the stator is still a couple of lines like this, um, you have to go and uh, select the stator, right click on it, and then go on edit, and then go to the uh, surface, and then select cover lines. When you do that, it will generate a face from the lines and when you sweep the face you will get a volume um, if you don't select cover lines when you sweep this uh, uh, lines here you will get um, a closed surfaces which is not anymore is which is not anymore a solid uh, 3d surface it's just like a closed planes or surfaces all back to back together um, so when you say cover lines, then you will get the surface here, and when you're sweeping the surface, um, everything will be fine from that point forward. I'm going to continue uh, the, the previous video, and uh, please apply this correction if it's applying to you. Um, so the stator is here. I'm going to select the stator, and then I'm going to go to the draw um, here, and then uh, I'm going to go to the sweep. Uh, section here and I'm going to select sweep along a vector okay now I'm gonna give you the vector X Y and Z the X for the vector I'm pressing tab to go right on the X uh, is 0 0.5025 and the Y value for the vector is 0 and the Z value for the vector is 0 again I'm gonna press OK here for the DX DY and DZ for the vector, we are going to have. Um, by the way, uh, these coordinates has to be absolute. So I'm gonna go and select relative and check it to absolute. So I just select absolute here. Um, so the dx, sorry. So now the dx. Uh, let me do this again uh, because it went into the absolute relative when I move. So I'm not going to move my um, mouse. So now it's going to be on absolute. As, as long as I'm moving my mouse here, not in the actual area, it's, it's going to stay on the absolute. Now I'm going to give you the second point that the, creates the vector. The X is going to be 0 0.091 and the Y is going to be 0 and the Z is going to be uh, 0 again. I'm going to press OK and that will uh, take care of the uh, defi definition of the vector. Uh, sweep along the vector. I want to make sure that the draft angle is 0 and the draft type is round. Now that I know that, I'm uh, pressing OK. And uh, I'm okay with that. Now I'm going to go and create a mirror 
of that on the other side so I select this data again and I go to the drawer and then uh, <clears throat> I will go to the duplicate meter um, why I cannot find my duplicate sorry it's my bad it's not draw anymore it's an edit so you go to duplicate and then you go to meter or you can use the meter sign or the icon there here they're the same so I'm gonna press meter and uh, I'm gonna put the values um, here I'm gonna press uh, tab for the X value Y value and Z values we put 0 0 0 and then for the DX value we will put minus 1 for the dy and dz value we put 0 and 0 there we go now I'm pressing OK and uh, <clears throat> I have my metered uh, part on the other side of the story I'm gonna press OK on that so now I have an stator that has uh, two part like this now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the materials first on the Cooper um, since I'm going to draw the, the coil. So I'm going to put Cooper here and um, press OK on that. And now I'm going to make the coil, the coil that is going to excite the actuator and uh, uh, create some force for us. So the coil is going to uh, go <coughs> here. So between this, you know, the E that we have, the coil is going to go inside here and out from there. So to create the coil, uh, we go and select the box. And uh, for the X value, we have minus 0.646. For the Y value, we put minus 0.264. And uh, for the Z value, we put the value of minus 0.803. That's for these values. And uh, for the DX, we have the value of 1.292 inch. And for DY, we have 0.528. Uh, and for DZ, Z, we have 0.511. Okay, I'm pressing OK for that, and I'm gonna call the box uh, coil, and uh, this will be the coil. Uh, different color for sure. Uh, the coil is co copper, so I'm gonna give you a hockey kind of a <clears throat> color. Pressing OK on that, and uh, there we go. Now we have the copper that is created in the middle of that and is actually not yet ready the reason is that is because we have two E's in the middle of the copper so we have to uh, get rid of those things um, one other thing that we want to do before that we want to make a base uh, for the base coil so I'm gonna again make um, make a coil here and uh, using the box and the value for X I'm gonna say um, minus 0.55 for Y I'm gonna put minus 0.168 and for Z I'm gonna put minus 0.803 and for the DX I'm going to have uh, 1.1 for dy I'm going to have 0.336 and for the DZ I'm gonna have 0.511 and pressing OK for that and uh, that would be the base coil um, I wanna call it B coil uh, B underline coil so that would be our base coil and um, that would basically cover the the problem here. Okay, now um, I'm going to show you what I have here. I have a coil that is like a cubical thing, and I have a base coil. 
Um, let me show you that. Okay, here I have the base coil um, here. This is the base coil, and I'm gonna subtract the base coil from the actual coil, and as a result, I would have a coil that is wrapping around the E parts of the, <coughs> the stator. And to do that, I just need to subtract them from each other. So I'm, pre I'm pressing and holding the control key and selecting the, con the coil first and then second the base coil. And then I go on the subtract and I make sure that the base coil is indeed a, a, a selected as a tool part. And the only thing I need to do is to press OK. And there we go. We have the coil all ready for our simulation. Uh, don't get um, uh, <clears throat> do any mistakes. This is not. It's like it looks a bit like it's two uh, sheets of uh, two plates uh, in parallel, but it's not two plates. This is actually all uh, solid because I'm putting 85% uh, transparency. These parts looks like they are just two sheets of plates. But it's not like that. It's basically solid uh, coil. Okay, let's stop playing with that and uh, let's go. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go select the vacuum. So um, since we have the armature here um, going up and down, you see this gray part here is gonna go up and down, and the up and down part is because of the um, basically uh, the gap that we are going to have air gap. Um, the problem is when you are changing this, it might make some problem for the meshing. So in order to have a better practice of uh, designing something that is always working uh, for different variable uh, in, the, in, the, in the model, you want to cover it uh, with another box. Now in this case I'm using a vacuum um, to make sure that it's not going to affect my design or my simulation but this box is going to help us to do the process of the meshing much easier and uh, make less headache for the simulator uh, when you're changing the gap uh, variable each time so that is uh, highly advisable to do uh, to do that and this is one of the tricks that I'm giving you here um, you should do that in any other applications that you have um, a moving part or moving objects in your model uh, based on the variable that you have. This will help you to have a better um, basically uh, mesh uh, generation. So I'm clicking on the box and I'm just creating a box to cover and um, hug basically my model. So the box is going to be the x is uh, minus uh, 0.55 and the y is minus 0.55 and the z is uh, 0.003 which is pretty small for that just goes on top of the <coughs> design and uh, for the dx we have uh, basically 1.1 1 .1, uh, twice um, for the dy of course we have 1.1 and for the dz we have 0.147 so that will cover up um, our entire um, basically uh, design I'm gonna call it band that is going to help for uh, <coughs> mesh generation only so it's an optional thing you don't need to do it but it's a good practice to always cover the entire uh, design with that band okay um, to make sure that it's not going to bug you, uh, you can actually put on display as a wire frame so it's not going to be shown that much and uh, you are not going to select their face when you are selecting something on inside. So you can't even see it but it's there. So this is basically the band that we have. Uh, what is this? Um, Yes, band. So basically, the moving part is basically within the band. Okay. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the excitation, uh, which is basically for the next tutorial. 
this one was a very long tutorial I mean long video for the modeling and after that I'm gonna work on the boundary and also the simulation setup um, and uh, we will have uh, ex we will run the simulation and check out verify the simulation results and then after that we are going to uh, export it to Simploder and check out this result in Simploder and Sys Simploder. Okay, um, thank you for watching and if you have any comments, any questions, please leave your comments below underneath this video. You can subscribe to this channel and I'm going to update every week or uh, half a week even um, one new tutorials and you will be um, more updated if you already subscribed to the channel so you will get actually feed news feed about the news vid new videos and also you can check out the discussions that is sometimes happening in the channel and get some answers from the discussion.